चैप्टर वन कैश इज एन द ओनली थिंग आई टेक फ्रॉम माई फादर्स स्टडी वन आई लिव होम आई टेक अ स्मॉल गोल्ड लाइटर आई लाइक द डिज़ाइन एंड फील ऑफ इट एंड अ फोल्डिंग नाइफ विथ ए रियली शार्प ब्लेड मेड टू स्किन डियर इट हैज ए फाइव इंच ब्लेड एंड अ नाइस हेफ्ट प्रॉब्ली समथिंग ही बॉट ऑन वन ऑफ इज ट्रिप्स अब्रॉड I also take a sturdy bright pocket flashlight out of a drawer plus sky blue rubber sunglasses to disguise my eyes. I think about my father's favorite sea dweller oyster Rolex. It's a beautiful watch but something flashy will only attract attention. My cheap plastic Casio watch with an alarm and stopwatch will do just fine and might actually be more useful. Reluctantly, I return the Rolex to its drawer. From the back of another drawer, I take out a photo of me and my older sister when we were little the two of us on a beach somewhere with greens plastered across our faces my sister's looking off to the side so half her face is in shadow and her smile is neatly caught in half it's like one of those greek tragedy masks in a textbook that's half one idea and half the opposite light and dark hope and despair laughter and sadness trust and loneliness For my part I am staring straight ahead undaunted at the camera nobody else is there at the beach my sister and I have on swimsuits hers a red flora print on one piece mine some baggy old blue trunks I am holding a plastic stick in my hand white foam is washing over our feet who took this where and when I have no clue and how could I have looked so happy and why did my father keep just that one photo The whole thing is a total mystery. I must have been three, my sister nine. Did we ever really get along that well? I have no memory of ever going to the beach with my family. No memory of going anywhere with them. No matter though, there is no way I'm going to leave that photo with my father. So I put it in my wallet. I don't have any photos of my mother. My father threw them all away. After giving it some thought, I decided to take the cell phone with me. Once he finds out I've taken it, My father will probably get the phone company to cut off service. Still, I toss it into my backpack along with the adapter. Doesn't add much weight, so why not? When it doesn't work anymore, I'll just chuck it. Just the bare necessities, that's all I need. Choosing which clothes to take is the hardest thing. I'll need a couple of sweaters and pairs of underwear. But what about shirts and trousers? Gloves, mufflers, shorts, a coat. There's no end to it. One thing I do know though I don't want to wander around some strange place with a huge backpack that screams out hey everybody check out the runaway do that and someone is sure to sit up and take notice next thing you know the police will haul me in and I'll be sent straight home if I don't wind up in some gang first any place cold is definitely out I decide easy enough just choose the opposite a warm place Then I can leave the coat and clothes behind and get by with half the clothes. I pick out wash and wear type things, the lightest ones I have, fold them neatly and stuff them in my backpack. I also pack a three season sleeping bag, the kind that rolls up nice and tight, toilet stuff, a rain poncho, notebook and pen, a walkman and 10 desks, got to have my music along with a spare rechargeable battery. That's about it. No need for any cooking gear. which is too heavy and takes up too much room since i can buy food at the local convenience store it takes a while but i'm able to subtract a lot of things from my list i add things cross them off then add a whole other bunch and cross them off too my 15th birthday is the ideal time to run away from home any earlier and it would be too soon any later i would have missed my chance during my first two years in junior high i'd worked out training myself for this day i started practicing judo in the first couple of years of grade school and still went sometimes in junior high but i didn't join any school teams whenever i had the time i'd jog around the school grounds swim or go to the local gym the young trainers there gave me free lessons showing me the best kind of stretching exercises and how to use the fitness machines to bulk up they taught me which muscles you use every day and which ones can only be built up with machines even the correct way to do a bench press i'm pretty tall to begin with and with all this exercise i have developed pretty broad shoulders and pecs most strangers would take me for 17 if i ran away looking my actual age you can imagine all the problems that it would cause 
other than that the trainers at the gym and the housekeeper who comes to our house every other day and of course the bare minimum required to get by at school i barely talk to anyone for a long time my father and i have avoided seeing each other we live under the same roof but our schedules are totally different he spends most of his time in his studio far away and i do my best to avoid him the school i'm going to is a private junior high for kids who are upper class or at least rich it's the kind of school where unless you really blow it you're automatically promoted to the high school on the same campus all the students dress neatly have nice straight teeth and are boring as hell naturally i have zero friends i build a wall around me never let anyone inside and try not to venture outside myself who could like somebody like that they all keep an eye on me from a distance they might hate me or even be afraid of me but i'm just glad they didn't bother me because i had tons of things to take care of including spending a lot of my free time devouring books in the school library i always paid close attention to what was said in class though just like the boy named crow suggested the facts and techniques or whatever they teach you in class isn't going to be very useful in the real world that's for sure let's face it teachers are basically a bunch of morons but you've got to remember this you're running away from home you probably won't have any chance to go to school anymore so like it or not you'd better absorb whatever you can while you've still got the chance become like a sheet of blotting paper and soak it all in later on you can figure out what to keep and what to unload i did what he said like i always almost do my brain like a sponge i focused on every word said in class and i let it all sink in figured out what it meant and committed everything to memory thanks to this i barely had to study outside of class but always came out near the top on exams my muscles were getting harder still even as i grew more withdrawn and quiet i tried hard to keep my emotions from showing so that no one classmates and teachers alike had a clue what i was thinking soon i'd be launched into the rough adult world and i knew i'd have to be tougher than anybody if i wanted to survive my eyes in the mirror are cold as a lizard's my expression fixed and unreadable i can't remember the last time i laughed or even showed a hint of a smile to other people even to myself i'm not trying to imply i can keep up this silent isolated facade all the time sometimes the wall i've erected around me comes crumbling down it doesn't happen very often but sometimes before i even realize what's going on there i am naked and defenseless and totally confused at times like that i always feel an omen calling out to me like a dark omnipresent pool of water a dark omnipresent pool of water it was probably always there hidden away somewhere but when the time comes it silently rushes out chilling every cell in your body you drown in that cruel flood gasping for breath you cling to a vent near the ceiling struggling but the air you manage to breathe is dry and burns your throat water and thirst cold and heat these supposedly opposite elements combine to assault you the world is a huge space but the space that will take you in and it doesn't have to be very big is no way to be found you seek a voice but what do you get silence you look for silence but guess what all you hear over and over and over is the voice of this omen and sometimes this prophetic voice pushes a secret switch hidden deep inside your brain your heart is like a great river after a long spell of rain spilling over its banks all signposts that once stood on the ground are gone inundated and carried away by the rush of water and still the rain beats down on the surface of the river every time you see a flood like that on the news you tell yourself that's it that's my heart before running away from home i wash my hands and face trim my nails swab out my ears and brush my teeth i take my time making sure my whole body is well scrubbed being really clean is sometimes the most important thing there is i gaze carefully at my face in the mirror jeans i'd gotten from my father and mother not that i have any recollection of what she looked like created this face i can do my best to not let any emotions show keeping my eyes from revealing anything bulk up my muscles but there's not much i can do about my looks i'm struck with my father's long thick eyebrows and deep lines between them i could probably kill him if i wanted to i'm sure he's strong enough and i can erase my mother from my memory but there's no way to erase the dna they passed down to me if i wanted to drive that away i'd have to get rid of me 
that's an omen condemned in that a mechanism buried inside of me a mechanism buried inside of you i switch off the light and leave the bathroom a heavy damp stillness lies over the house the whispers of people who don't exist the breath of the dead i look around standing stock still and taking a deep breath the clock shows 3 p.m the two hands cold and distant they are pretending to be non-committal but i know they are not on my side it's nearly time for me to say goodbye i pick up my backpack and slip it over my shoulders i've carried it any number of times but now it feels so much heavier shikoku i decide that's where i'll go there's no particular reason it has to be shikoku only that studying the map i got the feeling that's what i should head the more i look at the map actually every time i study it the more i feel shikoku talking at me it's far south of tokyo separated from the mainland by the water with a warm climate i've never been there have no friends or relatives there so if somebody started looking for me which i kind of doubt shikoku would be the last place they'd think of i pick up the ticket i'd reserved at the counter and climb aboard the night bus this is the cheapest way to get to takamatsu just a shade over 90 bucks nobody pays me any attention asks how old i am or gives me a second look the bus driver mechanically checks my ticket only a third of the seats are taken most passengers are traveling alone like me and the bus is strangely silent it's a long trip to takamatsu 10 hours according to the schedule and we'll be arriving early in the morning but i don't mind i've got plenty of time the bus pulls out of the station at 8 and i push my shit back no sooner do I settle down than my consciousness, like a battery that's lost its charge, starts to fade away and I fall asleep. Sometime in the middle of the night, a hard rain begins to fall. I wake up every once in a while, part of the chinzy curtain at the window, and gaze out at the highway rushing by. Raindrops beating against the glass, blurring streetlights alongside the road that stretch off into the distance at identical intervals like they were set down to measure the earth. A new light rushes up close and in an instant fades off behind us. I check my watch and see it's past midnight. I automatically shove to the front. My 15th birthday makes its appearance. Hey, happy birthday, the boy named Crow says. Thanks, I reply. The omen is still with me, though like a shadow. I check to make sure the wall around me is still in place. Then I close the curtain and fall back asleep.